enlightening for me as a as a, a male human being to understand what females potentially go through uh, in their lives. Because when I had no testosterone, the last thing I wanted to look at was meat. I didn't want to eat protein. I had, I wanted carbs. I saw the carbs. I wanted to eat them. And I found out why it was so hard for women to go on uh, the keto diet. John, how did you find carnivore? Well, it, uh, it started with uh, trying to uh, recover from cancer treatments. And uh, I'll just say that the cancer treatments that I've had weakened me physically and emotionally. I uh, wanted to regain normal hormones after uh, the treatment that I had. And I'll go through what all those treatments were, but this is what led me to carnivore. I, I wanted to get my hormones back, testosterone mainly. I wanted to lose the, the fat that I gained. I gained about 50 pounds uh, during the, the recovery uh, while I was on the uh, hormone medicine. But I wanted to get my muscles back. I, I felt like uh, I was just disintegrating with inside my skin. And uh, I wake up every morning at 3 a.m. for a couple of years now. Um, during the, the, the surgery recovery, uh, the, the radiation, the hormones, I just uh, would, especially with the hormones, I get the hot flashes every couple of hours. So I couldn't sleep through the night. And uh, it was uh, easy to watch a lot of YouTube from three o'clock in the morning until when Kristen woke up. And uh, then I found Dr. Barry and Carrie from Homestead Howe and Dr. Chafee and of course, Dave Mack from YouTube's Hottest No Carb Life channel. Uh, so let me take you back to where it all began. In 2019, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And uh, like most men, I didn't really know much about my prostate. So let me just give you a brief explanation. If you think of your bladder as a balloon and uh, it's tied to a straw, the knot that ties it there is, is your prostate. And uh, women don't have that knot. And men who have had radical prostatectomies don't have that knot. So we have to learn how to control the, our bladder, our urine flow, by basically bending the straw. Women are designed to do it. Men that have their prostate removed have to learn to do it. So in 2019, that was one of the first things that I had to recover. And uh, we'll talk later as we get into this, how the carnivore diet would have helped every stage of this uh, journey. But I, in 2020, uh, during the pandemic, I was told not to come back to the hospital for several months. And uh, during that time, we didn't know it, but my PSA was rising and uh, it had already gone to zero. So we thought it was behind us and uh, not really knowing what was going on for eight months was, was tough. But then finding that it was going up was even worse. It meant that I had uh, tumors somewhere that the prostate's been removed so that uh, now we had to figure out where the tumors were. Uh, there's a, a new type of scan out there called a PSMA PET scan, and it's prostate-specific membrane antigen. So it, it takes the, a radioisotope directly to the uh, cell wall of prostate cancer only, and it's like 90% effective at finding very, very, very small tumors. Uh, I was in the position that I needed that kind of scan, and... Uh, it found two common iliac lymph nodes that uh, uh, had been uh, infected or metastasized by the uh, prostate cancer. So it, it was good to know that where it was and that uh, now our next steps would be radiation. So I would have eight weeks of salvage radiation, which in the old days, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But the, the problem was they didn't have PSMA PET scans. So they would never really know where the extra tumors were they would just radiate the prostate bed and go in and salvage, you know, what didn't get cleaned out during the radiation or during the uh, surgery. Uh, that sometimes worked great and sometimes it didn't. I'm hopeful that mine, because we had the PSMA scan done and that we found the two lymph nodes, hopefully those were the only two. Uh, it's been more than two years since that, so I, I'm very hopeful. Uh, the, the radiation was uh, eight weeks long. During the pandemic, <laughs> during the winter time, we were making up days on the weekends. I have to give the, the team credit uh, who would come in on their Saturdays to keep me on schedule. I really appreciated that. And then uh, just about the time the radiation ended, I started 18 months of uh, androgen deprivation therapy. That's 
Lupron uh, therapy, basically a, a shot every three months that would drive my testosterone as low as it could go. Uh, the thought being that testosterone feeds prostate cancer. Uh, some early research gave some indications that uh, if we reduce testosterone, we can reduce our PSA and uh, live longer, survive longer. So that that's the, the treatment that was developed decades and decades ago, and it's been around for decades. Um, one unfortunate thing about men's prostate cancer treatment is that we have to fail one type of treatment before we're given the next type of treatment. Whereas, you know, other treatments, you get chemo and radiation together. We have to wait until we fail radiation before we can get chemo. So uh, it, it's a little bit frustrating, but uh, we'll talk about how the carnivore diet can impact every stage of that. I started the carnivore diet on uh, New Year's Eve, December, 2023. Uh, and I've been on it for about four months. So uh, let's talk about what it can do for uh, the you know, cancer recovery and cancer treatment. Just in order to get the biopsy, I was given an antibiotic called Leviquin and I, my body reacted to that Leviquin uh, severely. Uh, it started to attack my connective tissue. The uh, doctor's office also prescribed prednisone and the FDA had a black box warning never to combine Leviquin and prednisone. I found out during my treatment uh, for eight to 12 months, I, I just had sprained joints. Everything in my body was, was spraining. All the connective tissue was disintegrating. It hurt like hell. And uh, the doctor's office really had no solution other than painkillers. And that's the last thing I wanted to go on because everything that I saw about it on YouTube were that the people who were uh, you know, affected by this would get addicted to the painkillers, then they would have uh, constipation, digestion issues, and then they would take medicine for that. And they were just circling the drain. And I didn't want to go down that path. So I stayed away from the painkillers. Uh, but I found out that uh, the Oklahoma City Ballet is not allowed to take Leviquin. The Oklahoma City Thunder basketball team is not allowed to take Leviquin. It's, it could be career ending for professional athletes. For engineers, I guess we're allowed to take it. I'm never going to take it again, obviously. But uh, if I had had stronger joints, if if I had had the carnivore diet at my disposal when all this was happening, I, I, I may not have sprained as many. Uh, I may have been able to exercise. Look, I wasn't even able to take a walk around the block without spraining my ankle from just stepping off the curb. Uh, getting out of the chair, if I just pushed my hand down in the chair, I could sprain my thumb and then not be able to unzip my pants or undo my belt for two weeks. So this went on for months and months and months as I was trying to recover from the surgery of having the, the prostate removed. And uh, that was a whole challenge in and of itself. But if I had stronger joints from the uh, carnivore diet, which now four months of it, I know that I would have had because I've got the strongest joints I've ever had in my life. Before all the Leviquin, before all the cancer, I, I had three bulge discs in my back. I had torn meniscus in my knee. I just, you know, w w didn't have strong joints genetically, whatever, or from eating a lot of uh, inflammatory food, arthritis in my neck, back, everywhere, very small range of motion. But uh, the carnivore diet's given me total range of motion and taken away all the pain. Um, another, another thing that you can't have happen to you uh, during radiation treatment is uh, you can't have gas in your rectum. So when you're having your prostate radiated or the prostate bed radiated is very close to the rectum and to the bladder and they, they want a full bladder, but they want an empty rectum. And it's the hardest thing when you've been on keto, eating all the fiber you wanted, having all the gas you wanted. And now you're told for the next eight weeks, no gas. Now you have to go off fiber. What do you do? Well, if I had known about carnivore, holy crap, that would have been a savior. In fact, if anybody has to do uh, radiation treatment, eight weeks of radiation or however many, five, nine, whatever you're, you're having to do, try the carnivore diet just so that you, you, you don't have to worry about gas. Because the last thing you want to do is be vented on the table by the, the technicians. Uh, it doesn't hurt, but it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, they put a tube in and the gas comes out. The carnivore diet, low fiber, no fiber, low gas, it would have been perfect for that time period. Also during radiation treatment, uh, I became anemic. 
uh, my red blood cells went down, my uh, hemoglobin went down, white blood cells were all over the place. So uh, they, they just said, well, after you've done the, uh, you know, the treatment, it should return. But then I started the Lupron and uh, that was 18 months of treatment and it caused the same problems. They said the same thing. After you've done the, the Lupron, you should be able to get your, your, your blood back. Well, I think if I'd been on the carnivore diet, I would have had much better chance of maintaining red blood cells and not being so fatigued. I, I try to give uh, these presentations on my own channel and I go back and look at it from last year. I would be winded just talking for 30 minutes. So uh, it, it's amazing now what, what I can do just from a little bit of time that I've been on the carnivore. Uh, if the uh, Lupron treatment itself was, was unbelievable, I would you know, you could, I could describe it. The, 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 everybody kind of knows that when you're on this hormones, you're going to gain weight. I gained 50 pounds. Uh, I started having hot flashes within just a few weeks of getting the shots. And the hot flashes come in the evening. They last for uh, just a few minutes, but they come every two hours all night long. So they wake me up all night long. So for the past three years or so, I have not slept through the night at all. Uh, I sleep with, you know, special microfiber blankets around or towels to be able to just wake up soaking wet and then uh, dry off and cool down and, and fall back to sleep for a couple hours and steal some naps in between these, these hot flashes. Uh, the not being able to sleep, uh, you know, whether you have the hot flash or not, I would have racing thoughts. The Lupron will cause just racing thoughts where my mind would think about the worst that could happen, and uh, I, I just had trouble stopping those thoughts. Uh, I would cry for hours every day. Uh, I, listen, I would go to professional golf tournaments and sit on the, the side of the fairway and just ball for hours and hours. I'd, I'd wake up at 2 in the morning and start crying, cry all the way until you know, my wife woke up at 3 or 4 or 5 in the morning. So uh, the crying was, was just unstoppable. I think that if I'd have been on uh, the carnivore diet with a little bit of uh, something to control this crash of hormones that I was going through, it was hormone treatment. And I get it. I understand their theory and why they wanted me to have no testosterone at some point. It's to kill all the possibility of, of the, the potential for you know metastasis throughout my body. I get it. So we went through all that. But it was hell, and I never want to go through it again. I, I uh, you know, wanted my testosterone back at that point, but I do know that if, if I could have had the carnivore diet to help slow down that crash, I think a lot of the intensity would have, would have been moderated. So, again, I, I started the carnivore diet on uh, New Year's Eve in uh, 2024, or 2023, about four months ago. Uh, in November, before I started carnivore, my testosterone was measured and it was 19. And uh, it should have been like 600 to 900, you know, to be normal. The chance of it coming back normal was, was slim to none. I was told that uh, if you take uh, Lupron for more than six months, the possibility of your testosterone retort returning normally goes down 400%. So I'd pretty much given up any chance of coming back thought I was going to cry every day for the rest of my life, thought I'd be a skinny little weakling that, or a fat weakling, really, because at the time I was fatter. But, uh, you know, I, I couldn't do a push-up. I was just, you know, weak all the time. Well, after three weeks on the carnivore diet, I had another blood test, and my testosterone was up to 355. I had already started to feel changes happening. And uh, six weeks after carnivore started, my testosterone was at 540, almost normal. No reason for uh, hormone replacement therapy. They were ready to give me testosterone supplements, but don't need them if I'm already normal after just six weeks of the diet. They don't know that I'm on the diet. Uh, they think that it's Amazon supplements, and uh, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll keep it with that. But uh, that's kind of what's been happening. My, my testosterone has been coming back. So what does that do? Well, all joint pain is gone. All joint pain that I had 
virtually all my life, but really as from, from the time I was an adult on, I had everything from bulge discs to torn, you know, knee meniscus. I had everything going on. And then the Leviquin, but now none of it, no pain anywhere. I, I'm just amazed. I, I just wanted my hormones back and I found out that I could, could be totally pain free. This is, this is kind of nice. No pain in the neck or back. Uh, I haven't had any scans or anything to to confirm that I don't hurt, but you know I don't need them. Sugar cravings are gone. This has been pretty cool. Uh, I tried keto and uh, early, you know, in this journey, 2019, I was on the diet. They had me on the plant based, you know, low carb everything. I was eating the Impossible Burgers and they tasted okay, but I was sore and they hurt. You know, I ate the food they told me to, but I wasn't getting better, and uh, I didn't like that. But when I started carnivore, sugar cravings went away. It was easy not to uh, you know, feel like I had to have something in my mouth all the time. I love the uh, the diet so far. Where we eat you know meat and fat and butter and you know bacon and eggs, and it's just working awesome. So uh, during this time from New Year's Eve till now, I've lost about twenty five pounds. And uh, I started about 205 and down to about 180, 185 right in there. And uh, I, I like that my pants are getting looser and my shirts are getting tighter. That's exactly what I wanted. I uh, now can lift weights. Last year, I, I thought, well, let me try and do a push-up. Couldn't do one. Couldn't get my chest off the floor. Uh, this year, a few weeks into the carnival, just because of the way I felt, I thought, well, let me get down and see if I can do a push-up. So I jumped down on the floor and I did 10 real fast like I was in high school. And it was like, wow. And I've been doing them every day since and pulling up, pull, doing pull-ups on the you know, bars and sit-ups and, and lifting you know, dumbbells. So uh, my wife, Kristen, is joining me. She's doing the uh, carnivore diet and the, the weightlifting with me. And, and we're both feeling awesome. But uh, I would not have been able to do that if I'd still been eating plants. I know it. I'd still hurt. I'd have no energy. I do know this, that uh, the journey down the 18 months of Lupron was was uh, enlightening for me as, a, as a, a male human being to understand what females potentially go through uh, in their lives. Because when I had no testosterone, the last thing I wanted to look at was meat. I didn't want to eat protein. I had I wanted carbs. I saw the carbs. I wanted to eat them. And I found out why it was so hard for women to go on uh, the keto diet, partly because you're just sticking to that, you know, addiction, you know, of 20 grams of cocaine every morning. It's OK, right? No. So I, I, I stopped the, uh, the all the carbs and found out, wow, much better. My testosterone's coming back. I'm starting to sleep better now that the testosterone's coming back. Uh, I still have the hot flashes. Not sure if there's something with the, uh, you know, hormones going on there, estrogen and all that. But I am starting to sleep better, uh, getting some sleep in between the hot flashes. Uh, I don't cry anymore, except maybe the Hallmark movies with my wife. Uh, you know, I'm still a caring person. And I know it's the same thing every time, but, you know, we, we sit there and watch them and then brush them off. But as far as, uh, you know, crying for no reason, just sitting there. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore, and I'm so thankful that uh, I have control of my emotions. Uh, the hot flashes, they're fading away slowly, and, uh, you know, when they do, that'll be awesome. Let me say one thing about hot flashes and viruses. This was amazing. In December, the first week of December, before I started carnivore, I got a cold, and I believe it was a virus. I didn't get tested. Uh, I didn't go out of the house, but I had the deepest hacking cough for a couple of weeks. I lost a sense of taste and smell during that period of time. And uh, after about, well, pretty much as soon as it started, I stopped having hot flashes. It took me a day or two to recognize that I wasn't having hot flashes. And then on the fourth day, I went ahead and messaged my doctor, hey, I'm not having hot flashes. My, you know, testosterone must be coming back on its own. And they said, well, that's great. We'll see you, you know, at your next appointment in January. So a couple of, you know, days, more days go by, 10, 10 days go by. It's two weeks now. The cold resolves. No hot flashes for two weeks. Cold comes back or the cold leaves and the hot flashes come back. So something about while I had that virus was preventing my body from having the hot flashes. 
if the medical guys want to make a lot of money, all you need to do is figure out how to deliver that gene or that trigger, your CRISPR or your gene, you know, splicing tools, figure out how to deliver the no hot flash genes or the no hot flash triggers to men and women. You're going to sell more than Viagra. I guarantee it. <laughs> so the, the doctors are going to get very nervous about testosterone and prostate cancer. And uh, let me say that uh, there's a, a this technique, this PSMA, prostate specific membrane antigen PET scans, uh, it is highly sophisticated. It's going to find the uh, the cancer. And uh, I've got you know slides that show pictures of men that were infected with prostate cancer. Now remember, even though the prostate's gone, the the cancer can spread. You can still have it in your body, and it goes to your lungs, your lymph nodes, and to your bones first. And uh, these visuals show men with had this PSMA PET scan, and you can see throughout their entire body where all of the prostate cancer is. The really cool thing is that they, they can not only inject a radioisotope to light up the PET scan, they can inject a radioisotope to deliver a beta dose that kills the prostate cancer. Yeah, it kills it. So it this, this antigen hook takes your uh, beta radiation right to that prostate cancer cell, delivers that prostate, that, that radiation right there. It doesn't have to go through all the good tissue in your body and ch take a chance on giving you cancer somewhere else. And then it's amazing. They'll go from a PSA of 198 to 0 0.4 just in a matter of, you know, a few doses of these shots. So that's available in the rest of the world. Uh, you, again, in the U.S., we have to fail everything else first and, and just basically get treated you know, with the last res resort, uh, as we get to the last resort, the next last resort. Uh, the, the nice thing about the PSMA PET scan is that uh, should there be any return of my PSA, that means a tumor somewhere, uh, and that means that we need to find it, and the first attack on that tumor is going to be more radiation. Uh, the, the urologist that I had uh, recently that I, I ended up having to switch, he was very concerned about me having any kind of testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, well, look, whether I have replacement therapy or it comes back on its own, testosterone is going to be in the mix. And either we're comfortable with it or we're not. And if I still have a potential, I want to know about it. And I'd actually rather have chemo and go ahead and kill it because all hormone therapy does is put it to sleep. And, and I don't want it to sleep. The longer it la the longer cancer sticks around, the harder it is to get rid of. So, you know, I would rather just be done with it and get rid of it. Uh, so if you, if you go down this path, just be ready that there are going to be people that are pushed back and you're going to run into a lot of uh, friction. But the whole concept of PSMA PET scans is that you can find the tiny little tumors anywhere they might surface radiate them. The doctors are still going to want to put you on loop run. They're going to tell you that it makes the radiation better. Bullshit. I'm not going to ever do that again. But uh, what I tried to do during all of this, uh, my wife and I realized that we had to make the best of life. And, uh, you know, when I finished the hormone treatments, we went out and started doing, uh, actually, uh, while I was getting the hormone treatments, we went out and started um, going to the live golf tournaments and I got to go to the pro-ams and caddy for amateurs in these pro-ams. So I got to be with people on their bucket list day. Well, it was a bucket list day for me and uh, did that like five times last year, once this year already and got another one scheduled. I uh, won my uh, player of the year in my uh, golf league. So that was pretty cool. I started scuba diving again and uh, I run YouTube's uh, hottest energy risk engineering channel. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come over and look at that, I, I like to tell stories about energy risk engineering. And again, my testosterone recovery uh, is all due to the carnivore diet. I, I really had uh, no hopes that uh, I could feel this good now. And uh, I'm, I'm just super excited that I do. And, you know, I, I'd love to uh, help other people. I've already found out that when I talk to the family and friends that uh, sometimes they're reluctant to uh, you know, just accept everything that, that, you know, I've learned from three o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock in the morning, watching YouTube videos about carnivore for the past three years. So 
uh, it took me a while to get started, but uh, I'm happy to be on it and uh, happy with the results that uh, I've had and know that had I uh, been given just four months of carnivore before I started the cancer treatments, I would have been stronger going into the treatments. If I could have continued you know, throughout the cancer treatments, there's many ways, as I mentioned, that they would have made the treatments more bearable. So uh, hopefully somebody benefits from this. Uh, good luck with the, the whole testosterone versus PSA thing, but, but realize that there's uh, medical research out there that shows that high levels of testosterone are protective against prostate cancer. There's research out there with very little uh, input. Like, I don't know if I said it already, but the, uh, the first one that basically found that by reducing a man's testosterone would uh, reduce their PSA, but, but they would have a longer uh, survival. That study had three individuals and one dropped out, one died from another cause, and the one that finished the study was what they based everything on. So again, it's just like the sugar crap and the cholesterol crap. You know, be careful believing anything about PSA, and especially if you're talking to a urologist, they're surgeons, they just want to take it out, get a second opinion, talk to oncologists, go listen to YouTube videos about uh, the metabolic attacks on cancer, stop eating sugar, you know, enjoy the carnivore diet. It's so much easier than keto. Uh, you, you'll just have much better results. And uh, I think enjoy the whole experience. Just give it a chance. Well, firstly, congratulations. Um, was January the last time you saw your doctor? February, I had a blood test. So February. I had January and February. Um, wow. Have you talked all, at all about your diet with the, the doctor? No. I told him that I was taking Amazon supplements to boost my testosterone. And he said, well, okay, they that'll be okay. He didn't want to give me HRT, uh, hormone replacement therapy yet, until we waited until this six-month blood test, which is coming up in July. So he's not giving me the HRT. I'm not taking any Amazon supplements. I'm just eating meat. And uh, yeah, my testosterone is coming back. But it was already at 550 and my PSA was uh, not detectable in February. So if it comes back, we'll look for it. Mm. That, that's, that, that's awesome. But so at the start of the discussion, like, you told me, didn't you? Didn't you say that testosterone can make it worse, right? But that's that's only based on that three-person study, right? And they found that at low levels of testosterone, it's not really clear whether it, it, it's helpful or hurt or hurts you. But at high levels, which they didn't study the, the, in those days, but but now they have, they're finding out that it's protective. So uh, you know, I'm willing to live with the high testosterone, a strong body, able to withstand the treatment of the next round of radiation if I have to go through it, withstand chemo if I have to go through it. If I take Lupron, it's going gonna, it's gonna to weaken me. It's going to make me a fat weakling again and crying all the time, hating life. So, you know, that's not an answer for me. It's going to either be one of these, I'm going to fail something and be given that lutetium shot and get the, the radiation effect, you know, right down at the cell level. Uh, they do that in New Zealand already, and they do it in the rest of the world, but they, they here we have to fail everything first. Why, why is that? Do you know? I don't know. I have a suspicion that it, it, if you look at the whole prostate cancer world, that the, the first person you find out you have prostate cancer from is your urologist, and they're trained to cut it out, and, you know, they – they sort of take you right down that path. My my urologist said to me, don't get the bone scan. We'll, be, we'll just be chasing a lot of false positives. He said, this will be something that you had last year. By this time next year, it'll be something that you had. Um, a lot of poor advice. Uh, he's the one that when I found out about my recurrence, and I asked for a PSMA PET scan. He said, I think they're doing that research out at UCLA. I said, no, it's available here in Oklahoma if you write the order. And they screwed up the order three times to where the insurance company said, 
your doctor has to talk to one of our doctors. And I sent that message to my doctor and the message back was doctor doesn't talk to insurance company doctors. Okay, you're fired. <laughs> you know, you're not going to help me. You're not going to help fight this battle. You're not going to get me that scan. You weren't even aware that it's available here. And you're not going to write the, you're not going to talk to their, their doctor just to get this thing moving. So I ended up out looking for another doctor and realized I'm not going to find another urologist. I'm going to go look for a cancer doctor. I'm going to look for an oncologist. Someone understands radiation. So I just went in the internet. <laughs> I got lucky and found the one that did PSMA PET scans in Oklahoma. Uh, now, since then, I've moved on to the OU Stevenson Cancer Center, which is top notch. The doctors there know what they're doing. Uh, they know what PSMA PET scan is. Uh, you know, the, the doctor that I had before, the urologist, he didn't want me to have the HRT. He said, and in fact, if you pursue this course, you will have to find another urologist, which time I said, well, have you ever heard of bipolar androgen therapy, BAT? That's where you get, he'd never heard of it, but you get three months of Lupron, three months of testosterone. They intentionally give you both, one after the other, three months at a time. And that's a legitimate, you know, clinically trialed treatment course. He'd never heard of it. It was totally against any kind of uh, testosterone replacement. So that's when I found OU Stevenson and they said, no, you're your PSA has been undetectable for two years. And, uh, you know, the radiation might have done it all on its own. That was the other thing. I was borderline whether I needed to get the shots. I just didn't have a good doctor to help me make that decision. So I wanted belts and suspenders. You know, I looked at the research. Men who got the shot lived longer than men that didn't. Men who stayed on the shot for six months were better than, you know, nothing 18 months better than six months. So I went with 18 months and uh, did a lot of research in between, learned a lot of biology, learned a lot of microbiology uh, at, along the way. And uh, I'm doing some other things uh, to, to, to fight cancer. Uh, I also take high dose uh, melatonin uh, right around dinner time, 20 milligrams of melatonin. And uh, that's something that, you know, is, is I'm looking at as protective against metastasis. Uh, Fembendazole, I uh, also take that uh, every day. I'm uh, happy with uh, all the ways that these these uh, supplements can attack cancer. And, uh, you know, the carnivore diet's fantastic. I love getting the videos from uh, the doctors that tell us what we can stop taking, like taurine and glycine. I, I have my, my tray of supplements, my $300 a month of supplements. And since I'm on the carnivore diet, I just love checking off the one more one more supplement that we don't have to pay for every month. Nice. So um, how are you eating day to day? Well, um, basically, we eat a couple of eggs each and some bacon for breakfast. Or if we have leftover uh, roast or steak, we'll add that with the eggs. So we have some beef in the morning. Uh, every day, we love to have – we have our uh, our beef – Fortunately, we're in Oklahoma and 25 minutes from the house, we got to a ranch and we bought half a cow this year since we went carnivore. <laughs> and uh, the, the coolest thing that I saw online about uh, when you get, you know, a McDonald's patty or whatever, which we do, but do a DNA test on, on commercial meat and you find like a thousand different head of cattle are in one burger. We know one cow made all of our burgers for, you know, th this year. And, and we can have it. It was ground to 75, 25% fat. So we get a lot of fat. And uh, both my wife and I will we'll, we'll take, you know, a pound of beef out and eat a couple burgers each for lunch. And then we'll eat uh, either steaks or roast for dinner. Uh, after dinner, we like to have some egg custard. So uh, we're getting about four or five eggs a day and uh, pretty much uh, a couple of pounds of, of beef a day. And uh, we, we drink the, the butter in the coffee. We put... Uh, butter on the steak. I like to uh, sometimes saute. Believe it or not, I love the way the carnivore world said, if you know you become carnivore, you're going to learn how to cook and you're going to learn how to cook steaks really well. Uh, we, we have, we've, we've adapted. My job requires me to travel on the road quite a bit and uh, being able to eat in a hotel room, we found a nice little seven inch cooker with a glass top on it that we could put two ribeyes in there. And believe it or not, it's, it's so much cheaper just to go to a grocery store, buy 10 ribeyes, 
than it is to, to go out to dinner five times during the week, you know, going out to lunch and taking out clients or whatnot. So eating in the room uh, is, is something that we're learning to do. It's kind of fun. Uh, cooking the ribeyes nice, you know, and keeping them juicy. It's just a, a fun thing that we do. That's how we're eating now. Nice. And um, your wife, Kristen, she's joining you with uh, on this journey. Um, did it take thing or she was just like, no, I'm, I'm in for the ride? You know, all along, I I'd say that if she could have done the radiation for me, she would have. Uh, she has not been able to, to take my pain as, as, as well as I take it. Uh, and then certainly my emotional uh, stress, that was very difficult on her. So she's just always been trying to, to be part of whatever I do. And if, if I have to take supplements, as long as they're safe for her, she takes them too. But uh, in this case, she started off saying that uh, she wanted to try the keto again because we've done ketos, you know, for plenty of time. And, and she didn't like the, the idea of just totally losing, uh, you know, the bread and, and some of the snacks and some of that. But uh, after she tried it, she, she started just eating more meat and slowly giving up some of the, the side snacks. And she still eats cheese, but, you know, she's recognizing herself that she has to pace herself on how much cheese. Uh, I don't eat any cheese because I have a feeling that the cheese triggered my PSA last time. And the dairy products do. So I just stay away from, from cheese and dairy. Plus, it made me stall on weight loss. So um, she, you know, started off sort of keto, uh, ketovore, wanting to eat a lot of meat, but allowing herself to have some of the, the, the non-carnivore stuff. And uh, now she's pretty much eating exactly what I eat and loving it because uh, a life of, of stomach bloating for her has, has disappeared. And, uh, you know, she's still... She, she hasn't quite been on it for the same four months that I have. I'd say she's been really solid for two months. So I, I give her another couple of months and she'll start feeling this, this joint improvement that I have. And uh, I think just the more non-weight loss things that she feels, the better. She actually wants to gain weight. She's always been concerned that her weight's been too low. So to get her to even think about a carnivore diet, it's hard because every time you know she gets on the scale and says that, I'm only 109 pounds. I need to get back to 120. Well, 120 is when you're, you know, you had your belly, your pants didn't fit, and you didn't like the way you looked and didn't like the way you felt, you know. But at 109, you feel awesome. You're exercising more than you ever have. She does the treadmill 30 minutes a day on the steepest incline there is. And, the, you know, she's now starting to pump weight. You know, her testosterone is coming back. It, it's really cool to see, you know, us go from just – turning our nose up at eggs. We would buy a dozen eggs and they'd sit in the refrigerator for weeks. Well, now we buy two 18 packs of eggs like every week. So we love it. We're pounding the eggs. <laughs> nice. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who is uh, perhaps looking to start carnivore, but they're not sure quite how to go about it? Yeah, I think uh, there's a couple of ways to look at that. One is to, uh, first off, that eating the meat is going to be very easy, and uh, you'll transition into that. You'll like it better than counting carbs. Uh, what I have found, and I think you need to, to, to recognize, is that a lot of carnivores go through this, this early euphoria phase where it's fixing everything, and they want to tell everybody how great it is, and people start to get annoyed by it. And my brother and sister are done with me texting them another video on carnivore, you know. It's just, you know, something that you have to be careful about proselytizing too much uh, of, of this good thing. Lead by example, show them how good that it feels. Uh, they may ask questions and, uh, you know, keep watching the videos. I think that helps with motivation as far as uh, seeing especially on this channel, Dave, it's unbelievable that, you know, how many success stories that we're seeing here. It just, it gives you confidence that when you're out to dinner and that knucklehead says that, you know, you should have some salad with that. It'll be okay. You need a balanced diet. You know, you don't have to get in an argument with them, but, you know, just realize there's lots and lots of people who are with you on your side that, uh, that piece of lettuce, you've already tried it and it, and it, bloat you and you burp and you don't want the gas you don't want the pain so you just you know let them do their thing and you do your thing 
uh, it's going to be hard to convince somebody at the dinner table to change the way they eat. Uh, now, if you can, you know, get them to watch some of this channel, uh, that would be phenomenal. I think a lot of people want to come in for weight loss. Be careful about dairy. I'll say if you're just getting off the standard American diet, come into carnivore, eat everything that's on carnivore, eat dairy. You know, I, I was making whipped cream with stevia. Wow, a cup of whipping cream in a mixer and then just a little stevia and boom, you got a dessert, you know, and it's carnivore. Yeah, but uh, it, 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 you eat that every day and you won't lose weight. So, uh, you know, if you want to lose weight, be cautious with the dairy. If, uh, you know, you're, you're looking to gain weight, look at putting on muscle. And that's what, you know, I'm encouraging my wife to do is to, you know, keep putting on the muscle. Uh, the, the, the combination of eating the meat and building the muscle gives her, uh, you know, the weight that she wants that scale to look higher. But we know that she's not putting on the fat that's going to, you know, be bad for her health. Nice. Um, so, John, could you tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel? How can we find you and what, what kind of videos do you have on there? Oh, uh, sure. I'm an uh, energy risk engineer. So I, I work for an insurance broker and I, I deal with power plants and oil and gas facilities. Uh, I'm involved with you know, the, the initial risk assessments of these facilities. So I tell stories about that. And I, I'm trying to train new risk engineers coming into the field, how to be energy risk engineers. I feel like I've got decades of experience, so I'm freely sharing that and I'm answering their questions in the comments. And if they email me, I'm giving them free advice. I'm just trying to, to get everything out of my head uh, <laughs> before I can. And uh, it's at Energy Risk Engineering Lessons on YouTube. And uh, that is just uh, kind of the, the general idea that uh, I, tell, I talk about solar power, oil, uh, offshore stuff. So if you're ever interested in, you know, how energy engineering risk is managed, that's you know, where you'll find it. There's not a lot of people out there. You know, they say, find your niche. Dave, I have niche down. I've got uh, 324 subscribers now, but I've built them all on my own. I love it. I know that there are a bunch of engineers. I know a lot of them are coming over from LinkedIn. Uh, but, but that's great. You know, they, they keep the channel alive. I just got an email today from a, a young guy that told me that uh, he, he's treating me as his mentor. So I just love getting those kind of emails. That's why I do it. Uh, I don't care if I ever get monetized. Uh, it's just a fun thing to do. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And do you ever talk about carnivore on that channel? I have not. Uh, that's very interesting. And, you know, I think I've been thinking about having sort of a reactionary video to this, or I put up a, a little, uh, version of this talk on my, on another personal channel. I might do sort of a reactionary video on there for them. Uh, but you know how it is. You have to be careful about mixing audiences that, you know, if they're not interested in medical topics, uh, you know, of course, it couldn't be any worse than my, you know, uh, some of my 25 view videos. So <laughs> I can still do it. I do a reactionary video of this and, and build it up. Just let the guys that want to see it, people want to see it, take a look. No, I'll, I'll link to your channel below. And um, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, John. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dave. This has been great.